channel welcome back to vlogmas welcome to a brand new video <laughs> there's so much to welcome you back to if you are new here hello my name is scarlett and it is an honor to welcome you to my youtube channel it would be amazing if you were to stick around and subscribe and every single day at 5 30 there is a brand new video on my channel from the 1st of december up until the 24th i know at this point we are more than likely halfway through vlogmas potentially further through than that there's already loads for you to go back and catch up on if you so wish to now for today's video. Something that has been requested for such a long time. I don't know why I haven't done it sooner, but everything will be all in one place. Everything will be linked in the description box. And this is my daily beauty routine. I will be taking you through today every single thing from waking up this morning and doing my skincare to my daily makeup routine to achieve this look, which is really natural, super quick and easy, and actually not using that many products, to this evening when I get back from filming the three videos that I'm filming today, where I'll be taking off my makeup and showing you guys my night routine as well. We are about to head into the bathroom with myself from first thing this morning. Trigger warning, eye bags. Vlogmas is really taking it out on me. <laughs> it's been carnage. I've had system failures, I've had Lacey, which is like my hard drive crash, which means any footage that's on there, it's gone. This is, this is a lot, like a lot, a lot. And I feel like and my eye bags are literally down to here at the moment. Um, and they're sort of like my trouble area as it is anyway. So if I look a little bit tired and scary, mind, mind your business. And as I said, everything will be linked in the description box down below. Anything that's affiliated as well will also have like the AF in brackets as well, just to be transparent, etc., etc. And on that note, get cozy, grab a cuppa or coffee or whichever or whatever you're wanting to drink. And I hope you enjoy this video. Um, but also as well, just a side note, typical me waffling on, but actually this is quite important. I just reminder that obviously every person is different, every skin is different, this is what works for me. And just because it works for me, it might not work for you, which is so fine. I have been through so many products over the years, some that work, some that don't work for me. They obviously work for other people, but they may not work for me. So what I use at the moment is what is 100% my routine every day that really helps keep, which really helps keep my skin hydrated and glowy and clear. I'm 25 as well, so if you're wondering what uh, sort of age range I am when I'm using these products, I'm 25, so I'm really starting to factor in that I might be aging soon, so I'm starting to really incorporate anti-aging products into my skin as well. And as well, before you watch my skincare routine, it is excessive, but it isn't really excessive to me. Skincare is my passion, it's what I like to invest in, and I have loads of fun with it. So I personally like 10, and personally I really enjoy taking 10 minutes out of my morning and my evening to really sort of nourish and look after my skin. So although it might not be for you, like using lots of products, that is just what works for me. So as I say, get nice and cozy and join me in the bathroom with a bare-faced, very tired looking self. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome 
to my bathroom. Welcome to my daytime skincare routine. Now I will have told you guys earlier that in today's video I'm going to be showing you every single step of my daytime skincare routine, my everyday makeup routine, and then I will be coming back to you guys this evening to show you all my evening skincare routine, take off my makeup and show you everything step by step then as well. So, seeming as it is first thing in the morning, I have to shower, hence where my Italian dressing gown is on. I take my claw clip, tie my hair back and start with washing my face. And so, one of my top tips is wearing these. I put them on my wrist and it just means that water then doesn't fall down my arm. So, face cleansers, I have two and I'll be using both of these this evening. Um, but which one I use really depends on how my skin is feeling on the day. These are the two that I use a lot and they're both from Beauty Pie. And they're both, especially this one, affordable, especially for the size. This one is double the price, but it, it is a treatment cleanser and it's fantastic. So this is £15, this is £28. They're both from Beauty Pie. This one is the Super Healthy Skin and this one is the Acid Enzyme Exfoliating Cleanser. As I say, it really depends on my skin on the day. This morning I've broken up to a few hormonal breakouts on my chin. I'm going to be using the Acid Enzyme. I'm just going to be cleansing my skin but paying special attention to any areas that may need it more. This video, by the way, is not an ad. And as I just said, this is not an ad and it really isn't. I just have a strong love for Beauty Pie. And today we've really got to work on waking up my face because, oh my goodness me, Vlogmas is just taking it out on me and my skin. The stress, the pressure, I'm breaking out, which I hardly ever do, but it is all for the greater good and, and it's all going to be worth it in the end and I really hope you guys are enjoying Vlogmas so far. So now that my skin is clean and fresh, I'm now going to add my products. Now I am definitely a skincare girl. You may be watching this thinking that my product Usage is excessive, however this works for my skin, not everything is going to work for every skin. I've trialled and tested so many products over the years to find out what really works for my skin and so what I use now is my everyday and it has been for a very long time. And so I thoroughly recommend finding the skincare routine that works for you best. Trusting the process, just know that some things that may work for me may not work for you. So I always start with the Paula's Choice BHA Exfoliant, this is the liquid one, I apply it to a cotton pad. This product has been a life changer for me. I was always one of those people that had the most amazing skin. Up until I hit about 20, 21, I started getting really sort of cystic acne around my chin, really painful, and a lot of them. Like my skin just looked textured. It wasn't horrific, it was just bumpy, it was textured, and for something that I wasn't used to, it really knocked my confidence. I went to the doctors, I tried their creams, nothing worked for me. I bought this, and within three days, everything was clear. I do still get the odd breakout, especially around my time of the month, etc., which is to be expected, and sometimes with the seasons changing as well. But this product, I swear, has changed the Thing for me. I do use this twice a day, you'll see me using it this evening, but I just really use it on my trouble areas just to keep everything at bay and then once or twice a week I'll use it all over my face. Now to rehydrate my face before applying hydrating products. My biggest tip is to never add hyaluronic acid onto dry skin because it will dry your skin out more. So I'm using the Laneige Cream Skin Mist, this is like a tonic really, to rehydrate my skin. My next step, oh I've forgotten I've still got my armbands on. <laughs> Next up is an essence. This is the Snail Mucin one and I love this. This really does just give you that glass skin effect. And now going in with the hyaluronic acid. I have many favourites and The Ordinary is actually another one that I really like and is a great budget friendly one. However, this one from Longcomb is the best ever. It's a very sad day because I have just run out of that so I am just topping it up with The Ordinary one. And as I say, this is a great option for budget friendly and it's still a really great hyaluronic acid. For me, having hydrated skin is having happy and healthy skin. Personally, I really focus on having hydrating products in my skincare routine. And before that soaks in, I'm going to be using my treatment serum of the day. This one is the Caudalie Vino Perfect and it is amazing. Vino, Vino, not sure which, um, but this product is insane. It is on the pricier side, but once you start using this, you will never ever go back. It's such a stunning product. While that soaks in, I'm now going to go in with my eye cream, and I have many a love for many a different eye cream. My under eyes are actually my trouble zone. And I haven't necessarily got dark under eyes, I have really thin skin, so you can see the veins quite clearly, which is, which is why they appear quite red or blue, depending on the day. So I always look tired, which is really annoying. However, with good sleep, low stress, lots, lots of hydration, aka lots of water, and good eye products, I have really made a difference. Where I notice them a lot less, I still notice them. Personally, I don't want to go down the Botox or the filler route, so I make do with what I've got, um, and, and this eye cream in particular has changed the game. This is the Advanced Snail Peptide Eye Cream, so it's basically the, so it's from the same brand as the Snail Mucin Essence from earlier. It looks like this, so hydrating. I also feel like it's really brightening and plumping as well, which we which we love. And now it's time for moisturizer. Again, I've tried many, I love many. My daily go-to is this one from Tatcha. Now, understandably, this is not a budget-friendly option, but it is beautiful. It comes with a gold spatula to apply it if you want to. 
This is the Dewy Skin Cream. It is so moisturizing, it's so beautiful. I honestly use this every single day, I just adore it. Moving on to the most important step in anybody's skincare routine, Factor 50. This is the Beauty Pie one. It's affordable, it's a fantastic primer, so it's amazing under makeup. It doesn't pill, it is just the most beautiful SPF I have ever tried. And I have tried many. So my best friend the other day, after complimenting my skin and saying, why is your forehead at 25 so smooth? Like you don't have a single line, you don't have Botox, etc., etc., etc." I then said, well, I wear Factor 50 every single day. And she, she laughed at me, she looked outside and she pointed at the weather and said, it's raining. And my instant reaction was, that is why I have a smooth forehead. Obviously as well, using Factor 50, it isn't just for the benefit of anti-aging purposes. It's obviously, it's obviously for sun protection and avoiding other factors that can come with sun damage, obviously. This is a step that I never miss in my routine. If you can see outside, it means the sun is up and you should be wearing Factor 50. I think I've been using Factor 50 since I was about 20. I've been doing skincare since I was about 18, but using it properly since I was about 20, 21. And I actually did have fine lines in my forehead from the age of 15 because I always used to raise my eyebrows. I'm a very expressive person anyway and I do, I do move my face muscles a lot when I talk but when I was 15 I had this thing that I would look prettiest in selfies if I was like this all the time <laughs> so because I was like that all the time and I'd talk to boys like this thinking that makes me look the prettiest <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me why, I did end up with fine lines in my forehead. From using fantastic skincare, from using Factor 50 every single day, they've basically gone away and I do have a completely smooth forehead. I've, I've never had Botox up here, I've never had filler up here and I do, I do have a perfect smooth forehead. And so finding time in your day to do your skincare routine is what I thoroughly recommend you do. And then to finish everything off, I just used the Laneige lip mask, which I personally adore. And that is my daytime skincare routine complete. So I will see you guys when I come to do my makeup. I'm now in my mini dressing room and it is time to paint the face for the day. However, because I have just done my skincare and my last step was the, was the SPF 50 from Beauty Pie, which is also a primer, I'm not going to be priming my face. I'm, I'm gonna be applying a skin tint straight on top. Now I have many a favorite foundation, skin tints, etc. but this is the one that I reach for and this is the one that I would recommend for the most perfect, beautiful skin look. This really is sort of my go-to product. Like if I was stuck on a desert island and someone said choose one foundation, skin tint, etc., it would be this. And it's this product right here. It's the Clarins Skin Illusion and it is beautiful. I wear shade vanilla. It blends so beautifully into the skin and it's one of those products where you don't need to apply anything else on top if you don't want to. If you're in a rush in the morning and you just want to cover imperfections, cover any redness, this product is incredible. The smallest amount goes the longest way. It's stunning to blend. It's such a beautiful, glowy, sheer product. It lasts all day long. I have a damp beauty blender, but it's sort of a dry damp beauty blender, if that makes sense. That side is now blended. It is so quick and easy. It is also really buildable though, if you wanted to build more of a like, fuller coverage. And as I say, I have many a favorite uh, foundations. I'm really loving the new MAC Serum one. I've had some testers of that and I'm loving it. But this is just my go-to for a healthy looking skin. On my skin in particular, it doesn't need setting with any powders. I'm filming three videos today. <laughs> I do want a slight bit more coverage from this. So I'm just gonna add the smallest extra amount. Um, and like any foundations, personally find that less is more and building it in that direction is a lot better as opposed to applying a huge amount of foundation and then spending hours blending it out. You're better to do a thin layer and then top it off with as many thinner layers as you want until you meet your desired coverage. Personally, that is my preference. So however much right now because I'm on film, I want to just cover up my under eyes. Being raw and being realistic, this is the color of my under eyes. You're gonna have to deal with it because if I'm not filming, it is one of the last steps I do to my skin prep. And to avoid any creasing in that area, do not apply any foundations or skin tints to your under eyes. Leave them completely bare. Hence why you are going to notice my under eyes a lot more right now. <laughs> Next up, I'm gonna be using a cream bronzer. This is the Chanel one and I've had this for five years. Keep that between you and I because I really need to throw this one out and get a new one for hygiene reasons. <laughs> it is probably very out of date. But I love this product and yes, it's expensive, but as I say, I've been using this nearly daily for five years and there's so much product left. I have got the Universal one, so this is the first shade that ever came out. I do know that they've got other shades now. It just blends so beautifully. I personally find that it applies like a cream and sets like a powder. It has sort of a very sort of velvet finish to it so easy to blend and as I say it is expensive but it lasts so long and it's such a beautiful product and it's fantastic at just warming up the face. I always take a little bit down my neck as well. 
Personally, I don't necessarily contour because I'm quite pale and I don't like anything looking muddy or thick on my skin. When it comes to my nose, I basically just go over the whole thing with bronzer. Another reason why I do my concealer last, but I'll tell you the main reason in a second. But if I have a really bronzed nose, I can then just go through the middle with a tiny bit of concealer and naturally sort of contours my nose. Now moving on to cream blush, and this is by far my favourite cream blush on the entire planet. I was very luckily actually sent the collection of these a couple of months ago, I've not stopped using them ever since. These are the NARS Afterglow Liquid Blushes. This shade I'm using today is Dolce Vita and I've been using this all autumn. And I always say this when I apply it, like it looks terrifying and it looks dark. These blend out so beautifully and sheer, they are just utterly stunning. So I put a little bit on the tops of my cheekbones there, we have a fluffy brush. And I, and I just start where I place the product first, just to get it on my brush, and then I just move it up and down my cheeks. Now the reason that I don't put my concealer on first is so that I don't get white and then blush. Blend this actually up and under my eyes as well, so that when I then apply my concealer I get a seamless finish. These don't dry down that quickly, so you can sort of take your time to blend them out. There's not like a rush to get them set and down on the skin. And I take it slightly over my nose as well, just so everything blends in really beautifully. And even though you may be thinking I'm looking very blushed right now, once I finish all the process, you'll see that it just looks really, really stunning, natural, and as I say, blends really seamlessly. Okay, now it is time for concealer. So, the Holy Grail concealer, I've tried many. I am still yet to try the Long Common, which I've heard amazing things about, but I saw too many good reviews on this. This is the Hourglass Concealer. I have mine in shade Cotton. And a little goes a long way because it is really high coverage, but it also dries it beautifully. So mine is quite a light and brightening shade. So I just pop a little bit in the corners there, a little bit here for lifting. For my nose contouring, as I said, I take the skinny side of the applicator and I try and be as straight and as careful as I can down the bridge of my nose. I just need to cover up some blemishes. Concealer. Done. So I let that sit for a couple of minutes just because the longer you let this sit, the tackier it gets, meaning the more coverage you're going to get out of a smaller amount of product. And I use my beauty blender to blend this out. So I'm going to leave my under eyes to last because that is the area that I want the most coverage. So I do all the other little areas first that doesn't that don't need to go as tacky with a beauty blender and being really and being very careful to blend my nose. And I take it up as well. And now to blend out the concealer under my eyes. And I just keep going over the same place on my beauty blender. That way I just get such a beautiful seamless, I keep saying the word seamless, but I do just get a beautiful seamless finish as we can see on this side. So again, just going over the same place for ages until I've got a really decent amount of concealer on the sponge. And I know that it's beautifully blended in that corner. And then I just drag it out and then the excess moving it out. But this part here is what really lifts the face. You can really lift it up as well. Make sure it all looks seamless, a quick setting spray, and then we're moving on to powder. For powder, I'm a Huda Beauty person, and this is the Sugar Cookie. Excuse how dirty this is, but I always use a powder puff. Ever since using the powder puff trend, my under eyes have never been the same. So I don't apply much product, I just take off any excess on the back of my hand, I squish it together so it's a bit smaller, and I just press down. I'm not into baking, but I am into getting rid of this line. And by using this, this just, this creates a what under eye sort of look. Now you would not know that I have an under eye issue. <laughs> I'm pressing it in. There's no need to wipe off any excess either because I'm using a tiny amount of product and I'm just pressing that powder in. I don't powder from here upwards because I am a very smiley person and although I don't have any indentation or wrinkle, and even though I don't have any wrinkles here when I'm not smiling, I do have sort of laughter lines, which I personally love. I think laughter lines really give off amazing character, but if I set that area, then it sort of sets into those lines and they stay when, and then I have sort of lines on my face, but like makeup lines on my face when I'm not smiling, um, which gives the impression that I do have lines there, which I actually don't when I'm not smiling. Does that make sense? So I only powder this area here, and then any excess I just bring around my chin. And that is my powder routine done. And now it's time for brows. Now I always get complimented on my brows. So before I say the next statement, I always get complimented on my brows, okay? <laughs> I have been doing the same routine since I was a teenager since I was, and since I was in school. Don't get me wrong, I use less product now than the 2016 brows, but the technique is always still the same. 
whichever product is your favourite brow product but this is the technique that I use um, and today I'm just using the Refi Pencil in the light brown. Whatever your preferred sort of brow product is, this technique will still work. So I underline my brow first and I start off drawing a line at the front of the brow all the way down to the tail of the brow like that and then I do the same to the other side you look crazy for a second but it, it works out in the end just making sure that they're sort of similar and then follow it all the way around to the tail now to make my brows look supernatural I do not outline the top of my brow I will sometimes run the pencil through in sort of brush strokes in more sparse areas that I may just want a bit more colour like so but that is it that is all the product now however I then get an angled brush start here and I just push the product up and through my brows diffusing out the lines and just using that product throughout my brows as messy as I can as well just so they look really really natural sort of the aim of the game for my brows is to have somewhat defined brows but brows that don't look like they've necessarily been touched and as i say i've been using this routine for my brows for way over a decade and this is just how i like to do it And then go back through with the spoolie and just brush everything up and then I take a little look and then if I need anything else in any other area then I will just re-add any but I actually think today we're fine. That is my brow routine and I'm now just going to set my brows with a clear gel and usually I use Refi. Just brush the wax through. I like them sort of bushy but also comb down at the top so it creates the illusion of a thicker brow but also a tidy brow. Now moving on to eyeshadow, I have this beautiful palette from Patrick Ta, which is my favourite of eyeshadow palettes ever. However, because this is an everyday look, I tend to just use an eyeshadow pot, which is a cream. Um, this one is the Charlotte Tilbury, this is the Charlotte Tilbury one, this is in the colour Betty. But I also have the cream eyeshadow sticks from Hourglass and from Rare Beauty. They're all really lovely, but you get a lot more product in a pot. It's easier to sort of blend and use in a pot, I find. So I just get a fluffy brush and put this over my eyelids. Done. <laughs> Now because it is Christmas I'm going to be using a gel eyeliner as well. This is a gold one from Beauty Pie, which is the best eyeliner I've ever used in my life. And I'm just going to trace my eyes. I'm just going to trace my eyelash line with this. And I'm also going to trace my lower lash line with this as well. And then using a brown eyeliner from Hourglass. I'm just tightening my upper lash line. Probably not something you want to see because it's always not because it's not the most prettiest. Especially if you don't like eyes. And because that's already in my waterline, it will eventually transfer to my lower lash line as well, but kind of a bit more naturally. And now it's time for mascara. I have so many favourite mascaras, but one of the best that I've ever used is the Fan Festa from Benefit, especially if you like a full of volumed eye. And this one is waterproof and weatherproof, which we love. We've made it to the final step of my makeup, which is my lips. So I always start off by lining my lips, and this is my favourite lip liner of all time. The aesthetic, not my vibe in the whole neon green, but this is the Made by Mitchell in Honeysuckle. And I get this on the TikTok shop. But these are just the but these are honestly the creamiest lip liners, and this and this shade is the perfect nude. And I do overline this to give myself some lips because I haven't got the juiciest lips naturally. <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury on the lips today. This is in Penelope Pink. Again, I've had these for years and I really should be getting new ones, but we are almost out to be fair. This is a lovely pinky nude. Nothing offensive, goes with everything. A lovely shade. And I always top with a lip oil. The two OGs, the Clarins and the Dior. They both have pros and cons. The Clarins one doesn't last very long and it's quite oily. It's quite a greasy one. However, it is lip care. So it's fantastic on colder days. It's gonna keep your lips really hydrated. And yes, okay, you may need to reapply more, but it also does leave a tint as well. So once it does actually sink into your lips, you do get left with a pretty tint in whatever shade you've gone and got. 
The Dior is perfect for a night out. It is glossy, it's plumping, it's a beautiful product, and it doesn't sink into the lips. So it stays, you don't have to reapply it as often, but obviously it's not as, however it isn't as like caring for your lips as the Clarins. So for me, I use the Clarins during the day and I use the Dior at night and or if I'm going like out for an event or whichever. So today, because I'm doing some filming from home for a while before going out to do some filming, I'm just gonna be using the Clarins. And this is the shade Pitaya, or Pitaya. It gives a lovely high shine look and yeah, finishing with a good spray of setting spray. And ladies and gentlemen, my makeup is complete. So that is everything that I've used in my makeup and I've more than likely said earlier as well, but everything will be linked in the description box down below. And I'm going to do my hair, continue filming and I will see you guys this evening when it's time to take everything off. Good evening, it is the end of the day. It is half nine, I need to go and catch up when I'm a celebrity. And take off my makeup. I had a shower earlier when I got back from the horses. Uh, so I needed the time to film this for you guys. And so I've kept my makeup on until the very last minute. I filmed three videos today, which is a new record for me. <laughs> filmed three, edited two, not today's videos, but some previous videos. It's been a day. <laughs> and like I said earlier with the two cleansers that I use, I'm gonna start off with the happy super health with the happy, no, the super healthy skin from Beauty Pie. And I'm gonna make it into a nice lather in my hands and then rub my face with it. It's amazing at melting makeup and this accompanied with the microfiber uh, flannel that I showed you guys earlier. Chef's kiss. And on the days that I'm not using the acid cleanser, which today I am because as I said earlier I've got some stress and hormonal breakouts coming through, I would instead use this. This is the Beauty Pie Cleansing Balm. <laughs> if you can't tell, I love Beauty Pie. Ta-da! <laughs> Now double cleansing with the acid sign, but I won't be putting this over my eyes. I love this cleanser. I also don't find this drying, and I don't feel like it irritates my skin either. Time for toner, and of course, eating the Paula's Choice again. Similar steps up until the serum from this morning. So again, the Laneige Cream Mist, which again is like a cream toner. So now I'm using Essence. Just two pumps. Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid. Assuming as I've this is still run out of my Lumpkin one, I need to replace that. Also, I hope you guys don't mind the whole sort of like mirror filming. It's just so much easier. I've got such a small bathroom. I don't think you fit here with the size of the lens that I've got on. Next one is eye cream. I'm actually going to be using this one from Shishuede this evening. And I apply this quite thick. And now moving on to my treatment nighttime serum. It's one of two or three. It's always an anti-aging sort of night repair sort of vibe to it. Either a retinol or the night repair serum from Estee Lauder. My top recs that I found so far is again this one from Beauty Pie. This is the Youth Born. This one does have retinol in it. I have tried their one that is just called Retinol 2 and that is also lovely. I just, I love this. This gives such a beautiful glow to the skin. But I only use this a few times a week so when I'm not using this I use this one from Estee Lauder which is the which is the Advanced Night Repair Serum. Now, Beauty Pie do do their own version of this, a much bigger version and much cheaper. Theirs is £44. This is like £80 something pounds that I was very lucky to have been sent this. The Youth Bomb Collection is actually, I think, Beauty Pie's most expensive range. This is £44 as well, as is the moisturiser that I'll show you guys in a second. But it's a massive tube and I've been using this for six months, so really it's 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 using its money's worth. The evening is a Youth Bomb night. Spread it evenly across my skin. And I let this sit for about 45 seconds. Next step isn't an everyday step, this is just for when it's super cold and my skin could just feel and I feel like my skin could have dried out like this evening at the yard, it was really windy and about one degree and although obviously my skin was really hydrated with products that I put on this morning I just want to give it some extra love and nourishment this evening because the one thing I do not want to overlook is weathered. <laughs> so on days like this I use the Japan Fusion again from Beauty Pie, I promise this is not an ad, I wish it was Beauty Pie, please work with me um, but I put this on just before putting on my moisturiser and it's just... Oh, this is beautiful. It's the most beautiful Alexa and it really does just hydrate and nourish the skin. The consistency and feel of this is sort of like a mixture between a serum and an oil, but it's non-greasy. Just beautiful. The last step, which is of course moisturiser. I said the last step, it's sometimes the last step. I told you guys I'm excessive on the whole skincare front. This is the Youth Balm by Beauty Pie and oh, it's just this gorgeous, rich, thick cream. It's not too thick that it's difficult to rub in, but it's thick enough to give your skin the love that it needs. 
This is just stunning and it is worth £44. As I said, this is sometimes my end of my skincare routine. How but if you've never heard of slugging, I slug two to three times a week. And I use the CeraVe healing ointment, I'll leave it linked, and or the La Roche Posay, 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 <laughs> Ciso Plast Balm, the B5 one. And I just lather it over my face about an hour after doing my skincare like this. I wake up 10 years younger, 10 years fresher. My skin is just, mm, chef's kiss. Unlike earlier, unlike earlier, I finished, of course, with the Laneige lip mask, which I should really should have got some more of in the Black Friday sale. Just come to the realisation that I effed up majorly there. <laughs> anyway, that concludes my beauty routines. I hope you've loved this video. Don't forget that at 5.30pm every single day there's a brand new video on my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed. All the links are in the description box down below and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye! <laughs>